Hi there. Today I'm going to be showcasing Kind's implementation of webhooks. Uh, more specifically, we'll be able to get Kind events from the authentication layer itself and use those events to start triggering and integrating with other third-party applications. Um, I'll showcase what those events look like, how we can actually utilize webhooks and third-party things, and we'll build our little Zapier app that essentially will send a Discord message every single time a user is authenticated to our app. So um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, here in the settings page, um, here I'm on my kind domain page. So here, if I click on the settings button, scroll all the way down into the webhook section. Inside the webhook section, I can add my own webhooks. See, I have a couple of ones already set up. So for this one, we'll create a new one. We'll call it Zapier to Discord, with the description being that this will be a Zapier implementation that sends a Discord message. Um, obviously, typo. Here, let's fix that. Um, we will be, need to specify endpoint URL. So, Kind will be sending information inside a webhook into this endpoint URL. Um, basically, every single kind of third party integration, if you ever set up a trigger, they'll provide you a URL that you'll be able to hit. You can also set up your own server uh, or use like any kind of server pseudo um, apps available like ngrok to basically deploy it and look for and search for events that are posted. Uh, in this implementation, we'll be using Zapier, but to kind of see what's happening here, um, I'll be using webhook.site for now. So webhook.site essentially makes you, gives you a unique URL that you're able to go ahead and test endpoints with. Um, so I'm gonna be copying this URL here and I'll paste it in the endpoint URL. So as for the events, this is where we get to pick and choose what events we wanna track. Uh, we can pick all of them and this will, then every single event will be sent to the webhook. Uh, be careful if you obviously don't want to have every single event be sent because it could cost um, server overloading, uh, processing all this kind of information. And a lot of these third-party integration apps actually pay, uh, you pay per ping uh, of the webhook trigger itself. So this might actually start running you some bills. But uh, for my little example here, I'll be selecting all of them. But the one that we will be looking for is the user authentication. But just to see all the requests coming in, I'll just click all of them for now. So let's click save. I have all of my events here. The webhook that site integration is here. Uh, everything looks good. So I'm gonna click save on the top right. So now we have the Zapier to Discord integration going on to this here. So on this webhook that site, we don't have any information. Um, so let's navigate back to our application itself. Currently, I'm just running a starter kit, uh, super simple. Uh, whatever app that you're already integrating in with your business should work. So inside the starter kit, I can press sign in, continue with Google, and I'll sign into my account. So once I signed into my account, I'll be able to see my application is all sorted, but my webhook that site is now pinged. So we can see inside this ping, we have the raw content file of the webhook site. Uh, as you can see, it's one long string. And so this entire string is actually JWT we will have to decode it before we obviously be able to parse it and see what the information is about. Um, just for right now, we can actually copy it and heading over to a decryptor. So we have a decryptor here on the Kind website. I'm gonna just paste in my JWT here and we can see that we have our header identification uh, for, from, that's representative of the public key and we have the payload. So inside this payload, we have a user ID and the source is user timestamp uh, and the type which is what we're going to be looking for is that the user is now authenticated in itself um, obviously header is super important this will be used to verify that uh, from your public key that this is actually coming from you um, if you want to know what your public key is simply navigate to this url here which is um, your domain.kind.com slash dot well dash known jwks all this information will be available in documentation form, so you don't have to memorize these or copy my limbo, but there's a point that you can actually hit to find and verify your JWKS keys. Um, so here we can see that this will be the uh, authentication layer. So if we go back to the authentication portion of the JWT, so JWT with the kit and algorithm S256, we can kind of pseudo verify, yep it seems to be matching. So it is coming from the authentic source itself. Cool. 
So how do we start actually using and utilizing this with an outside integrated product? So here I'll be creating a Zapier instance uh, that will actually do most of this for me. Um, you can use any single app. Zapier is one of the easier ones to use. You can use active pieces, you can use any and uh, anything that actually is able to receive as a trigger for a webhook. So what that looks like is something like this. Let's create a new Zap here. Uh, inside the Zap, we'll see that we have a trigger. So inside this trigger, we'll be searching for a webhook. Inside this webhook property, we have the webhook premium by Zapier, which is what we want. And inside this event, we will have to catch the raw hook itself. Since the contents of the webhook is encrypted with our JWT, we will need to catch the raw information that's stored in the body. Press continue. It says that we're listening. So now it's currently looking for um, a trigger that gets sent to this. So um, let's copy the webhook URL that gets generated and overwrite it from our settings page for the Zapier Discord instance. So let's go back to editing our webhook. Inside here in the endpoint URL, we just copy over to the webhook that site that we use for our testing and we press save. And it looks like it now is officially updated. So to test out the JWT, we will need to re-log into the process so that it actually does send another webhook to the Zapier instance for it to be able to test it and authenticate it. So I'm gonna log out and sign back into my account that I was using. Authentication is all sorted. Now we can do a test trigger. Inside the test trigger, we can see that this is the information here. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Um, we have the raw body, which is the JWT with the header contents as needed. So it did receive it. So we are good to go on that front. So we'll continue with the selected record. What we now need to do is decrypt the JWT because right now we can't really read it. Um, Zapier offers um, a way to do so, not directly to decrypt it, but we'll have to write some code. Uh, be pretty easy code. So you can go click on code by Zapier and inside here, choose the event. And we're going to run some JavaScript to actually be able to decrypt the JWT itself. Press continue. So input data, um, we'll be trying to parse the data that's coming in from the webhook inside the body. So we'll call that the JWT for the JSON web token. And we will need to navigate and select the body itself. So the entire contents of the raw body is the JWT that we're trying to decrypt. So we will need to do so. Okay. Now we need to write some code. Um, I already have the code prepackaged. Um, let me just copy and paste it here. Essentially, all we're going to be doing is exact uh, algorithm to go ahead and base 64 URL it and you know um, decode it from the JWT itself. Um, this should essentially just decode it for us. We continue and test it out. See what the step looks like. So we test the step from the contents and it looks like it decoded it properly. Data user um, event inside the user and we get the payload type of user authenticated, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So what do we do with this now? Now we add another step. We'll call this a, um, we want to only post if it will be a user authentication section. So here we can add a path so inside this path, um, we'll have it be able to run different things based on the different circumstances that's happening. So in the first path, we will choose the field. So inside the decrypted webhook, if the decode payload type is user authenticated, if this condition matches exactly, then um, uh, we will run it. So here, all I did is essentially say that we are looking for specifically only this parameter. And if the parameter matches the user authenticated section, it will continue down this path, which is exactly what we want. So we press continue. Okay. Inside this path, if it matches, we want it to actually post to our Discord server. So here we will integrate it with Discord. Inside Discord, we will choose an event called send message in a channel message. Press continue. We will choose our Discord account. So currently I have a Discord account set up here. Uh, to add Discord to Zapier, all you have to do is invite the bot over to Zapier and Zapier will manage it all for you. But otherwise you will have to generate and make a Discord account bot user, get grab the tokens from there 
integrated into whatever app that you're using, etc. Uh, I suggest you look at Discord discrete documentation uh, to be able to figure the, all of that out um, yourself. If you're trying to do a manual approach, highly suggest uh, it's the appears just bought adding uh, makes it much, much simpler. Cool. So I press continue inside this action, you can select the channel that we want to test this out. So we'll do a test channel that I've set up. So if a person is user authenticated, what we want to say is congrats, another user got authenticated into your nice simple message. Here we can actually grab and put the user IDs and etc. from the webhook response itself, but we're not going to be able we're not going to be doing that. We're going to do a basic message itself. Here we can, you know, uh, add in other Discord instances like usernames. If we want this to be text to speech, if the bot name wants to be different for the specific request, we can change the bot icon as well. Because currently, right now, it's set to Zapier and it's using um, Zapier's logo, but that's fine with me for now. So we continue, and then now we can test this step. So I have my Discord open. Inside Discord, we can click on my server. So here in my server, I have a test channel. If I go into test the step, it will now post the message when someone is looking into our app, which is what we want. Cool. Um, here, I need to add other paths. Uh, at the minute, I don't really want anything else to happen. Um, here, we can designate paths to have different kind of functionality. If a person is, for example, authenticated versus signed up versus failed to authenticate, etc. But for now, to test this out, let's just kill this and only send a channel for the message. Everything's fine. We have the path that it goes to. Now we can start to publish. Now that we're publishing the Zapier app, it says that it is published. And here, that means that every single time a person is authenticated, we should receive a Discord message. So here's my Discord. Let's try it out. So we'll go back to our app and sign in. Here's my Discord. So if I continue with Google, sign in back to my account, you should automatically get a message here. Boom. Congrats on the user got authenticated into your app. So there we go. Super seamless, super awesome. Uh, hugely widely potential. You can start setting up extremely complicated flows such as putting people into CRMs based off of what kind of email address that they have, uh, based off of the sign-in, sending custom emails out specific, specifically to people who are just registered in signups, etc. Possibilities are endless. Um, it was a pleasure for me to introduce you to the webhook integration. Have a great day. Cheers.